Uh, Juan, uh, I've sat at these managerial hirings and firings over the years, and uh, when Sam Perlazzo came in, he pointed to fundamentals and then we're going to turn the page, and when Dave Tremblay took over, we heard a lot of the same things. How can Juan Samuel be a real difference maker in accomplishing some of those things? We know you're not a miracle worker, but uh, how can you help us accomplish some of those things? Well, change comes in all kind of different ways. Uh, I mean, you have here probably the same kind of talk by three different guys right now. Like I said, we are different. Sometimes uh, the players will relate better than, than uh, to one guy than the other. Hopefully just your, your personality in there could make it make a difference so your message could be the same as how those guys approach and how you deliver that message even though it's the same message that we all been saying and uh that's that could be the difference jeff uh, one i think there's a perception with all due all fairness to dave tramley i think there was a perception that some of the fundamental mistakes were based on a lack of focus and may have not been dealt with in a tough enough manner. If you see a guy not running out a ground ball that you think should have been run out, specifically, what would you do that other people wouldn't do to address that? Well, those are some of the things that I'm going to address at, 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 at the players' meeting here, that w what I expect from those guys. And uh, if it needs to be addressed right then, we will be addressing those. But those guys know me by now, know what I'm all about, and, and I'm big on those little things. I just think that throughout the course of the uh, ball game, how, how many times are you going to run down the first base? Uh, four times, five times at the most. So make sure you let those guys know, you know, you only have an opportunity to do this four or five times. I think you could give us that. I think uh, those people on the stands are, are paying good money to come and see those guys, and, and I think uh, we, we, we have to be better. We have to care more about those people that are on the stands. Rich. Uh, Andy, in looking for a successor, when you said you'll be looking at other candidates, how important is previous major league managing experience? As I've said on, you know, any time we get into the subject of managers, whatever the scenario is, to me, it's they are custom fits to different managers are going to be real good fits and successful in different environments. And you just look at, you know, there are a bunch of Hall of Fame managers that have been terminated from one place or another. Uh, you know, you, you look at guys that, uh, you know, I, Joe Torre is a perfect example. He had two or three different stops, but he was the perfect guy for the Yankees in that circumstance and dealing with Steinbrenner and everything that swirls around New York. He was perfect for it. Uh, and you'll find other managers like like guys I was fortunate enough to work with in Minnesota, like Tom Kelly, that sort of that, the, that work ethic that he instilled. He had a core of young players that he managed up through the system. They could sort of enforce that code with new players coming in. It is a custom fit, and we need to find the the uh, right fit here now we have a lot of young players uh, you know experience is something that will be valued you know somebody that's been through it and shown it shown the way uh, but often you you might you know you're going to talk to a wide enough spectrum of people and you're going to watch how man how Juan does how he manages and you know you're you know you're going to be swayed by different things you have certain predispositions going in predispositions but but you those might be persuaded you know you might be persuaded otherwise when we were looking for a full-time manager in Minnesota Tom Kelly was the interim guy I really didn't think Tom was like going to be the candidate but you just watched what happened on the field the energy level went up uh, the performance level went up we, we interviewed guys that had success and we made a certain conclusion so uh, I do think you try to figure out, you know, who you are and what you need in that particular venue, and those things will change over time. They'll evolve. Dan. Andy, how big of a setback um, has this start been, along with the seeming regression of your core nucleus going forward? How big of a setback has that it's been? It's a on giant your rebuilding? step backwards. You know, we can make up for it because we got plenty of time, but it's a giant step that we really difficult to get over that 2-16 and 16 start. Uh, and then when things started to stabilize and Alfredo Simon was doing a nice job for us at the end, then he gets hit, you hit the right, you know, he gets hurt, you get tough part of your schedule, 
and things start cascading down again, uh, which led, you know, in some respects to us making the announcement we're making today. Uh, but, it, it, you know, I would, I had hoped, I made no bones about it. Look, you know, we showed a lot of individual progression in year two. Uh, we needed to make some collective improvements in year three. We needed to move the needle forward in terms of where we were in the standings. And, you know, we just got off to a horrific start. Amber. And this is kind of along the lines of what Schmuck was talking about. Dave took a lot of heat and criticism for a lack of accountability and at times being too much of a player's coach. How much does that weigh into your decision to go with somebody like Juan Samuel, who does have more of a reputation of being a non, no nonsense kind of a person? Well, you know, the I just chose the best candidate that we had internally, and and in my view, there that Juan clearly was somebody from being around the club like I've been, the player, he has a different relationship with the players. He has, he holds their respect, he does discipline them, uh, but it doesn't seem to be at the expense of their ability to communicate. Uh, but you know, in honesty, you, you know, you can be a coach, but when you're sitting in that manager's chair, everything changes a little bit. You know, you just like, it's like a guy going from vice president to president. When it's all about you, it's something different. You know, Juan's gonna get exposed to things he's never been exposed before. Pre-game, you know, interviews, post-game interviews, you know, all those uh, burdens that that will start to show on a manager, and it's not, it's not an easy thing. People will change. Now, he is remarkably easygoing, you know, about this. And when I talk to him about taking the position, he seems to be just couldn't be cooler about the whole thing. Kind of understands. I think he's probably been waiting for this moment. Yeah, I think he has a pretty good idea what he's going to do. Uh, and I think that's a very positive thing. Dan. <clears throat> and you had said that it's not Dave's fault, the record wasn't Dave's fault, but a change had to be made. What was your reasoning in not making any other changes to the staff, um, and specifically the hitting coach situation? You know, Terry's been here 12 years. They have the, uh, you know, the, the fewest runs scored in the American League. Coaching what was your reasoning staff, not yeah, making Coaching changes? staff is in the domain of the uh, field manager. And I'm not one for... Uh, imposing my will. I have suggestions, I have ideas. As a matter of fact, Gary Allenson is going to come and be the third base coach, but before we talked to Gary, I wanted to talk to Juan. Maybe he had somebody else in mind. You know, maybe he did, you know, he wanted to go a different direction, but we, I would not make that commitment until I talked to Juan. And I, I still feel that way about other coaching positions. That's going to be a function of him coming to me with, with some ideas. Follow that. I mean, do you per foresee any changes being made in the staff, and is that something that, that Juan could do as an interim manager? I think as an interim, it's more difficult than it would be as full time. But I think it's definitely something I've already talked to him about. We've already had this conversation. If you have ideas, if there are different things that you want to accomplish, then, and you think you have somebody that can help, let's talk about it. So that is definitely in his his domain to to uh, talk to us about. Last question, Rock. You were talking earlier about trying to pick the roster first before you make it, this kind of a change. Now that you've made the change, are there still things you would anticipate doing with the roster sooner rather than later? And are, are there internal options for you to do that? Uh, the answer to that question is you, we did indeed. I did try to do everything I could to try to give Dave every chance that we possibly could. And I really wasn't satisfied with what we gave Dave. You know, It didn't make as big an impact as I had hoped. We still have a few moves in us. Uh, not as many as I perhaps would like, and I've already talked to uh, Juan about one that might be in the offing, uh, and that's just a function of, of time. But yeah, we still, you know, we're not, you know, we're not exhausted as it relates to player moves. We still have some things that we've been thinking about we'd like to introduce, uh, you know, some of them in the not too distant future. Thanks. Just a reminder, our clubhouse opens at 3.30. Juan will be available at 4 in the interview room. Thanks. Thanks, Mike.